Right. So, uh, good afternoon for the geography demo and orientation. So, uh, before we start with the orientation, we uh, just like to introduce ourselves. So, uh, I'm Gautam, and uh, I've uh, been teaching in uh, Shankar's Academy for the last uh, seven years. And between 2018 and 20, I was handling close to five ge geography optional batches. So, I'm uh, resuming again this year. And uh, I think Mr. Arun can. Hi all. Good afternoon. Yeah, myself, I'm Arun. Um, I'm teaching here in Shankar for the last one year. And before that, I was in Kerala. Uh, I taught in uh, Kerala State Civil Service Academy from 2016 onwards. Then uh, I worked as a faculty at Central University of Kerala. Then I came here. So uh, I, I, come, uh, I did my post-graduation in geography and uh, here. Right. Welcome you all. So the orientation will have two parts. Arun sir will be starting first. So he will explain uh, the methods in which you can choose an optional. What exactly is the first part of your geography syllabus? And in the second segment, I'll be dealing with uh, what exactly is human geography and the other segments and your queries. Okay. So let Arun sir start first. Just be there. Thank you. Sir. Once again, good afternoon. Why there is no much energy? Yes, good afternoon. <clears throat> Fine. So, uh, you are from the Sadhana batch. Students are there from Sadhana batch. Then weekend batch are there. I, uh, anybody from weekend batch? Anybody from uh, June, June batch, regular batch? Fine, 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 fine. Your GS classes have started for geography? No, no, fine. fine. So, <clears throat> what do you know about this subject? Let's have an interest, interactive session. What do you know about the subject, geography? Is it interesting subject or is it a tougher subject or is it a boring subject? What do you think? It's interesting subject. Uh -huh. Good. Anybody feels that it is a boring subject or a tougher one? I may ask you, anybody, uh, anyone of you from uh, geography background, geography uh, undergraduation or post-graduation, geology? No? Fine, fine. So all of you are very new to the subject. All right. So most of you have uh, left the subject at the matriculation level, I guess. Yes? Fine, fine. So tell me what you know this you you know about the subject geography what is it it's the study of earth fine then what else study of earth then what else it studies about the climate of planet it talks about the topography of our planet then geography Structure of the atmosphere, it talks about the structure of the atmosphere, then different landforms that we have on the planet. It discusses about the landform that we have on the planet, like the mountains we have, plains, plateaus, rift valleys, volcanoes, earthquakes, and various geophysical phenomena associated with the planet. All those things are there in the syllabus. It is a part of the subject. Then what else? It talks about oceans, oceanography, ocean currents, fine. Talks about various geophysical phenomena. Fine. Then only this much. It talks about the distribution of human population throughout the planets and how they are distributed and what are the factors influencing this kind of distribution. Then what are the settlements? What are the different types of settlements? And various economic activities like agriculture, industry, service sector, transportation, communication. Planning, all these things are a part and parcel of the subject. Yes or no? Yeah. Fine. So you are here for a demo class of geography optional. Fine. Before going into detail about the subject, uh, let me introduce you. What is 
the relevance of optional and how to choose an optional. So there are basically three factors that you have to consider while choosing an optional. The foremost factor is your interest. Second factor, what is the second factor apart from that in, of your interest? Second factor is the availability of the study material. And the third most important factor is its overlap with the GS papers. So while choosing an optional, you need to consider these three important points. One is the overlap with the GS papers. And second one is the interest of yours interest, then the availability of study materials. So are you all interested in geography? Yeah? So if anybody is sitting with some dilemma in the mind, what you can do or how to check your interest is, I will suggest you to read the NCRTs first. At least from sixth standard onwards, we have uh, 11th standard NCRT, 12th standard, from sixth onwards, we have geography mentioned in NCRTs. So go through all these geography NCRTs and you will get an idea about what the subject is all about, which all things are coming under the subject. There are different things like landform studies are the geomorphologies are the, it studies about the mountain formations like Himalaya, Andes, Rockies, and all these things are the, it talks about the volcanoes, it talks about the earthquakes and their distribution throughout the world. What are the factors cause contributing the distribution of earthquake and volcanoes? It talks about tsunamis, ocean currents. It talks about tropical cyclone, planetary wind system. It talks about the distribution of vegetation, uh, atmospheric winds. Everything is there as a part of the physical geography. So all these things are given in NCRT and a big, uh, of, uh, for a student who's studying in 6th to 12th. Basic understanding you will get from that regarding the subject. So read that carefully. So you'll get your taste, whether it is in, uh, interesting you uh, or it is boring. Because you are the only person who is going to sit with the subject for the coming two years. It is not your faculty or it is not your mentor who is going to sit with the subject. You are the person and the subject. So you are going to sit with the subject for the two years. So you need to be very careful. So that talks about the interest. Second one is the availability of materials. Nowadays, materials are available throughout India. There is no dearth of material or there is no shortage of material for geography like a subject. And what is the third important factor? It's overlap with the GS papers. What are the GS papers? GS papers, GS paper one, two, three, fine. So you went, went through all the syllabus of GS papers. Yeah, fine. Geography falls under which GS paper? GS paper one and a small portion of geography falls under GS paper three also. The disaster management, that part is a part of the geography, geography and environment. Fine. So uh, did you go through the syllabus of geography? Syllabus pattern of geography? Yes or no? No, we'll have a discussion about the syllabus later. Fine. So if you see the syllabus of GS papers and the, G, uh, the syllabus of geography optional paper, there is a greater overlap with the GS paper. It is not only the GS paper one, there are, there are areas where, where we can find overlap in the GS paper one, GS paper two, and GS paper three, especially GS paper one and three. And regarding GS paper two, there is some uh, geopolitical factors are also there. So indirectly, it will also be coming into the picture. All right. So say for, uh, say for example, roughly there is an overlap of around 370 to 380 marks. When it consider, when we consider GS paper one, GS paper two, GS paper three, and the essay paper, apart from the optional, from this optional geography, there is around 380, 370 to 390 marks overlap can be seen in every year by considering essay GS papers. All right. right. So this is the things or the criteria that you need to think about while choosing an optional. Any doubts still here? No, just an introduction, how to choose an optional. So foremost thing, give the, the most priority to your interest, then the overlap with the syllabus. And what is the, what is the, what is the advantage of when there is an overlap comes in between? What is the advantage of that? 
because you are already doing it in the optional there will be this clear cut diff reflection of the same thing can be seen in the gs paper so that is a smarter way of choosing an optional it is not only for geography there are overlap with economy uh, uh, economics there is overlap uh, sociology there is overlap polity there is overlap history there is overlap and uh, just like that there is a overlap with geography and here the overlap is the most important factor is around 370 to 390 marks overlap can be seen all right and what is the level of preparation one has to do for a upsc exam what is the level of preparation one has to do for a upsc exam i'm talking about the optional paper regarding the optional paper is concerned uh, one has to do a level of preparation which is above under graduation but below post graduation so what is that above under graduation and below post graduation while doing under graduation you will be able to know lot of things which are there throughout the planet whether it is a physical or a human fa factors you will be you will be having a clear cut idea which all things are there what is reason behind the formation of all these things and when there is a post graduation level you will be having an analytical ability to connect different things which are there in the planet all right so what upsc is expecting us just above under graduation and below post graduation that is the standard in which you have to write your answers and express your views all right fine <clears throat> above under graduation below post graduation and what is the demand of the subject what is the demand of the subject by considering all the optional subject what geography demands is geography demands the conceptual clarity in every aspect which are mentioned in the syllabus conceptual clarity and it is there is not much to mug up there is not much to mug up mug up there we need a conceptual clarity things say for example i'll take an example like a himalaya so recollect what all things you know about himalaya that you have studied in your matriculation up to your matriculation level sure. himalaya is one of the young fold mountains in the planet fine then tallest mountain range in the world fine you learned about the peaks like everest makalu taulagiri kanchenjunga godwin austin or mount k2 and you remember the height of all these mountains only everest what is the height 8848 is the height of everest fine then you remember the rivers name of the rivers that are originating from himalaya ganges is there fine brahmaputra is there indus is there and their tributaries these are the these are the factual things associated with himalaya some basic things associated with himalaya so while you were doing your matriculation or the school exams preparing for your school exams you might have by heart at the height of all these mountains and the names of all these rivers and tributaries everything was there but now, right now it is faded am i right fine but upsc is not focusing all these factual things upsc is focuses the conceptual clarity regarding every aspects the same himalaya i can explain in a different perspective when upsc were the upsc focus himalaya is a, one of the most important fold mountains in the planet just like the counterparts of north america that is rockies andes in the south america alps in europe just like that we have a himalaya in the northern part of india which is a result of the collision of two important tectonic plates so it is a result of a collision of a two important tectonic plates in the planet and that has folded some portions of the crust and created the young fold mountain which can be seen in the southern part of asia or northern part of india that is the himalaya which is having three parallel ranges like himadri himachal shivalik likewise the explanation will goes on it's not like what is the height of himalaya or it is not like what is the length of the river indus what are the important tributaries of indus all those things we will not be discussing in geography optional as far as upsc exam is concerned here what we need is the conceptual clarity or overall idea what is the reason behind the formation of himalaya and how himalaya is growing right now what are the disaster associated with himalaya and the surrounding areas why himalaya has a large numbers of earthquakes uh, nowadays why there is a uh, flash floods are taking place in himalayan and the foothills of himalaya these are the areas where we where we need to focus so what i mean uh, what i mean is there is not much 
factual things to mug up what we need an understanding a clear cut thorough understanding about each and every aspect which is mentioned in the syllabus all right can you follow me fine fine <clears throat> And one most important advantage of the subject is this geography is a meeting place of humanities with science. It's a meeting place of both humanities and science. So what does it mean? If you see the syllabus of geography, there are areas that are mainly connected with scientific logical things and some other areas that are purely connected with the humanities or arts, arts areas. So if a candidate who is coming from arts background, if a candidate who is coming from science background, if a candidate who's, uh, who has done their engineering or medicine can easily choose this particular option and easily uh, learn what is geography and all the, all the areas which are mentioned in the syllabus, there is an equal advantage for all the branches because this is a synthesis of both science and arts. Like, for example, I can explain it. If you see the syllabus, the first part of the syllabus, you will get to know uh, there, there is a mentioning in the physical geography. The first part of the syllabus is physical geography. And the second part of the syllabus is, if you divide it into two parts, major parts, second part is the human geography. So regarding human geography and its related development, Gautam Sar will discuss in detail, and I will be focusing on the ge uh, physical geography part and its application in paper two also. All right. So this is the part of geography that is highly connected with the logical part. That is a science part. All right. So physical geography is consisting of geomorphology, geomorphology, climatology, oceanography, biogeography, and environmental geography. So this is the part of the subject that is highly connected with science or logical parts. What is a geomorphology? Geomorphology. Geomorphology talks about different types of landforms over the surface. Landforms like the fold mountains like Himalaya, plateaus like the Deccan, uh, the volcanoes, uh, uh, volcanic regions in the Ring of Fire regions. It will be talking about the earthquakes. It will be talking about the rift valleys like Narmada Rift. It will be talking about the plains like Indo-Gangetic plains, their formation, their evolution, and their related developments. So this is the different types of landforms. And in the same geomorphology, we will discuss about what are the reasons behind the frequent occurrence of uh, landslides, what are the uh, reasons behind the frequent occurrence of earthquakes, what are the reasons behind the frequent occurrence of tropical cyclones in Bay of Bengal and Arabian Sea. All these are, all these are a part of a geomorphological area, especially tropicals, when, when it is coming towards the tropical cyclone, on, it is a part of the climatology. So geomorphology deals with all the things that are related with the landform development. All right. So we have a, a plateau in India. We have a plateau in India, almost in the center part of India, the peninsular India. You know, you know the name of the plateau? Deccan Plateau. How this plateau has been formed? Through volcanic eruption. What is the name of the volcano? Can you see any volcano here in the mainland of India right now? No? So you're saying that barren island volcano has resulted in the Deccan, trap, Deccan Plateau? No. Then what was the reason? Hotspot volcanism. There was an incident like a hotspot volcanism. When Indian subcontinent was a part of the southern hemisphere, when it was attached with the African continent, it resulted in volcanic eruption. The hotspot is right now existing in the Reunion Islands. That has resulted in the volcanic eruption and created a Deccan lava plateau in the regions of Gujarat and Maharashtra regions. So this, these are areas of geomorphology. This is how we reason all the, all the things that you can see on the surface. Then comes to climatology. That is the second part of the subject, climatology. It talks about the atmosphere as a whole. It talks about the atmosphere as a whole, which means what is the composition, structure of atmosphere, distribution of temperature, and its variation in the different regions? What is incoming solar radiation? How the Earth's surface and the planet is interacting with that incoming solar radiation? What are the planetary winds? What are the tropical cyclone, anticyclone, temperate cyclones? What are the atmospheric circulations? And what is climate change? What are the causative factors behind climate change? And what are the mitigative measures we can suggest to manage climate change? 
So these are the areas which is coming under climatology. Again, I'm connecting it with the scientific thing or logical things. So geomorphology is one part. Second part is most important part is the climatology. And the third part, which is directly connected with the third part, which is directly connected with the logical part of the subject is oceanography. In oceanography, we'll discuss about the bottom topography of oceans, various oceans, and the temperature, salinity, distribution within the ocean. And then we'll discuss about the ocean currents and how these ocean currents are modifying the coastal climate. Like we'll be talking about the humidity of atmosphere, how the humidity of atmosphere is influenced by a particular ocean current, and how this ocean current is influencing the temperature condition along the coastline. So all these are some of the logical things which are having a highly, a highly, which are highly connected with the physics aspects or a logical aspect of the science. All right. So geomorphology discuss about the topography or landforms and their evolution and formation, and climatology discuss about the atmosphere and various phenomena associated with the atmosphere, and oceanography discuss about the various phenomena associated with the ocean, ocean things. Fine. Then the last part is biogeography and environmental geography of this scientific part. Biogeography and environmental geography talks about the environment or environment in the surrounding area, the distribution of plants and animals, uh, distribution of uh, different resources, all these things will be coming under that area. And right now the environment is highly vulnerable. And what are the measures we can uh, put forward for uh, mitigating that uh, uh, the, the coming uh, future in the coming future, how to preserve this environment, all those things is a part of that area. So this is the part of geographical syllabus which are highly connected with science. All right. So in GS classes, you might have uh, studied all these areas in a broader manner. And when it comes to optional, we'll be focusing each and every subject in detail and each and every aspect which is mentioned in the syllabus in detail. All right. So this is the science part of the subject. <clears throat> Fine. So this is what I have mentioned earlier, overlap with GS paper. Around GS paper 1, GS paper 3, and essay paper, there is roughly around 350 to 370 mark can be scored. So there is an overlap of around this much of uh, the marks with the GS paper and essay paper. And what is the advantage of geography when compared to other subjects? The most important aspect is you can have a creative and a very unique way of answering in geography. And what is the advantage here? If you're writing an answer in history or if you're writing an answer in any other art subject, you have to write the entire paper and express your ideas like an entire essay. You have to write every page there is an essay, like if, it's, if it is an art subject. Whether if it is an ocean, uh, whether it is a geographical subject or a geographical question, what is your advantage is you can develop your own creative and a unique way of writing and expressing your ideas. And for that, there are certain tools. You can use uh, the distribution uh, to show the distribution of something. You can use maps. You can use, you can draw diagrams. You can use pie charts. You can uh, use the table or ex uh, 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 explanation of anything. So in such a way that you can improvise your answer one after another. So all the time you can create a, your own a unique way of answer writing. That is an advantage of the subject. All right, so that doesn't mean that you have to be uh, an artist to draw a diagram. That doesn't mean that you have to draw the entire world map as it is given in a world map of India, world map in a, in a, throughout the world. So only thing is, you just need to draw. You just need to draw what is the location, or you just need to know what, where the North America is located in relation with South America, or where Africa is located in relation with Europe. So all those things you need to know. The clarity have to be there. Only that much. And if you're drawing a diagram, that has to be highly expressive and a readable format. That is the demand. And it is the geography subject or the evaluator is not expecting you to draw an artistic world map or an artistic diagram. Understood? Fine. <clears throat> and in paper two, when it comes to paper two, we have a, an advantage over other subjects. There is a 20 marker question. There is a 20 marker question in which 10 locations will be given. 
This is an advantage of geography paper two. There is a 20 marker question that shows uh, different locations. That is the 10 locations will be given. And you need to mark that 10 locations in the map of India. Map of India will be given, you need to mark it. And apart from that, you need to write some important things that are regarding these particular locations, like uh, significance of these locations, physical, commercial, economic, uh, ecological, environmental, or cultural significance of all these locations within 30 words. So have to locate it, and you have to write what is the attributes of all these locations. Your 20 mark is done. So this is an advantage. This is an advantage over other areas of the syllabus. <clears throat> Then talking about the syllabus, we have this the syllabus is vast. While talking about the geography syllabus, this the syllabus is vast. Anybody who came across with the syllabus, tell me that is the syllabus vast. Did you see the syllabus? Syllabus is vast. Syllabus is vast means it is vast for other subjects too. Like history, we have a vast syllabus. Geography, we have a vast syllabus. Economy, we have a vast syllabus. Public administration also, we have a vast syllabus. But it is not the vastness of the syllabus. It is your interest that has to play a major role to decide the option. So it is not the vastness. How much the vastness is, that doesn't mean if you have a greater interest in a particular subject, you can easily learn it. And we are here to cover this entire part of the syllabus uh, from scratches up to the most advanced levels. And we will be taking around from, we are starting by 7th of June and by December, we can complete the entire subject. How vast it is, that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean. And it is the, your interest that makes sense. So I admit the syllabus is vast, but it is not the vastness that decides anything. It is your interest that decides everything. Fine. Do I need to mug up a lot of facts like I did it for my matriculation? I already answered it. No need to mug up anything here. Only thing is no need of any uh, long, long statistical data. No need of all those things. Only thing is you just need to plot some percentage. You know, just you just need to plot some what is the unemployment uh, unemployment percentage. We have no need of any values here. No one is asking about the what is the length of the Nile River. Uh, this geography option, if any question comes like, they'll be asking about the what is the socio cultural and economic and environmental impact of that river. All those things you can easily write. All right. So there is not much to mug up related to compared to other subjects. Is it tough or easy? Again, that is your interest and the ability of your teachers to make you understand a particular concept. And both of us are very confident to explain any concept in the syllabus at a level which is very suitable for you to understand and grasp it at an at a, at a easy manner. Do I need a good drawing skill? Again, there is no need of a good drawing skill. Only thing is, if you are drawing a world map, you just need what is the location. This is a location, relative location of Africa and North America and South America. This is fine. But don't put Africa here and North America here. This is a blunder. What you need is, this is enough for you. To show some distribution of any climate or any vegetation or any mineral, you just need this one. All right. If you are confident that you can make this, and the subject is for you. How long will it take to finish the syllabus? Again, I'm saying it is from 7th of the July, we'll be finishing the syllabus by December. Mid of December, by mid of December, the entire syllabus will be covered and you'll be getting some uh, uh, answer writing sessions in, in between. That too will be the, then the classes will be scheduled on weekends. Weekends like there will be sessions uh, on Saturday and Sundays. That is the pattern we are uh, scheduling the classes. Uh, 9.30 to 
1.30 or 9 to 1. That will be the timing of the classes. Every weekend, Saturday and Sunday will be the session. All right. So during the weekdays, you can attend your GS studies. And weekends, we have the optional papers. <clears throat> <clears throat> physical geography part i explained climatology oceanography human geography part human geography part will be explained by gaudam sar in detail <clears throat> fine fine so what is the smarter way here we have both human geography and physical geography parts in the subject the subject has a optional paper has a paper one and paper two both this paper one and paper two is consisting of physical part and human parts. So physical parts paper one talks about world physical geography. And there is a part of human geography too. And when it comes to paper two, there is a mentioning about the physical aspect of India and human and economic aspects of India. So both the paper is a mix of both physical and human aspects. All right. So what is the way, what is the smarter way to grasp this much of syllabus within a span of six months? What is the smarter way? For that, we have an answer. We will be clubbing the syllabus. We'll be clubbing the syllabus of paper one with paper two. That is a smarter way of uh, dealing with the vast syllabus. So what, what, is the, what is the way of clubbing? So just listen here. This is a part of geomorphology, which is there in the syllabus as a vast area of geography. There are certain theories in geomorphology. We'll discuss about the various factors of geomorphology first, like uh, what, is the, uh, what is the continental crust, what is an oceanic crust, what are the different landforms over here, what is the uh, evolution of these landforms, all these things will be discussed in the geomorphology. Then we'll go on to into the theories in geomorphology. The theories in geomorphology will be done, like landform developmental theories, all those uh, plate tectonics theory, continental drift theories, all those theories are there that will be covered here. And how can we club it with paper two? This is the way of clubbing it. We'll be dealing with Indian topography, Indian mountains, plateaus, coastal plains, etc. in that aspect. So this is a way we are going to club with paper one with paper two. That is a smarter way and easy way to connect all the things. So we'll be while dealing with geomorphology and theories in geomorphology, we'll have a uh, yeah, we'll have a clear cut. Uh, definition or we'll have a clear cut understanding about Indian aspect of this landforms. After completing that, we'll be dealing with the climatology part where we have a lot of theories in the climatology. Then after that, this, the second paper, the same second paper, we have a Indian climate, tropical monsoon, distribution of temperature, rainfall, vegetation in India. Just application of what all things we have discussed in paper one, in India. So this is how we are planning to club the syllabus. So paper one is this is the area of paper one and this is the area of paper two. So by doing this, you can interlink all those areas, all those things. While we discussing about the uh, in, in, in geomorphology, when we discuss about the earthquakes, the causative, the cause factors behind the earthquakes, and there are what is the theory in support of this uh, earthquake or the reasons behind the earthquake. After studying that, we will be discussing about which all regions in India are prone to earthquakes. And what are the reasons behind all these new can corners that records the highest magnitude earthquakes in a very frequent manner. So this is how we are going to club. In world climatology, we will be discussing about different climate throughout the world, like tropical monsoon will be there, hot vegetable climate will be there, like savanna climate will be there. And after discussing that, we will be applying the same thing in Indian aspect. Then when it comes to oceanography, there are certain theories in oceanography, then we'll be linking it with the paper two part. That's the coastal belts of India, islands, blue water economy, all these things will be done simultaneously. All right, so what is the advantages here? You are familiar with the concept here in the paper one, and you are just applying the concept here in the paper two. All right, so interlinking all the things at the same time. So biogeography also is having a same application between paper one and paper two. So this is the way we are going to discuss it. Fine, so this is the syllabus. 
these are the areas of physical geography part of the syllabus especially the science or logical part of the syllabus any doubt still here so what all things we discuss how to choose an optional thing optional and uh, there are basically three most important things that you need to consider while choosing an option one is the in your interest second one is the availability of the materials third one is overlap with the gs papers second we discuss about the what is the advantage of the geography it is a mix of both science and arts so anybody who is from uh, medicine background or engineering background or science background or arts background or commerce background or hotel management background can easily choose the subject everyone has a uh, equal advantage when it comes to geography because this is a meeting place of both arts and science anybody can learn it and another advantage of the subject is though the syllabus is a bit vast it is your interest that is a very vital in the subject we can cover this entire syllabus within a span of four months or four to five months fine then what is the advantage of the subject in answer writing side when we discuss about the answer writing side there is a advantage like you can create your own way of answering or a unique and creative way of answering by incorporating world maps diagrams tables pie charts all these techniques you can use to make your answer very unique so so these are the things that we need to uh, we covered in the part one of the discussion any doubt still here so gurdan sir has a second session after this will uh, both of us, both of us will be here for answering your queries all right so all the best thank you materials material regarding the books uh, we will update in the uh, first session of geography uh, which is starting on 7th of Ju july 7th of july apart from the ncert ncert is the fundamental books that you have to refer and apart from that there are certain standard books that we we'll list out the books and the, all the materials will be the name will be given fine anything else regarding this part of the discussion we'll take your questions general questions after the uh, second discussion second part of the discussion is over will be covered in the after second session any other things regarding this area no all right so we'll meet you after 30 minutes gautam sir will join you thank you साइड कंट्रोल है ना
So I believe the greater part of your discussion was already done, right? So I would have spoken about how exactly should you choose your optional, then the basics on the physical part of geography. Now coming to the second segment, that is your section B. And the uh, thing is, uh, whenever we come to geography optional subject, before a student chooses this subject, they have a misconception. And that is the bigger section which I have to clarify. Okay, and this is where I want you to pay even more attention. Please understand that geography as such, you know, the first part is your natural part. Immediately when you talk about geography, these are the things you will think of, right? You will think about uh, mountain systems and rivers. You will think about rainfall and your cloud systems. You will think about ocean currents, right? So the physical part, the forest areas, the animals and the plants. But please understand, there is a larger segment of geography, which is 50% of your syllabus. That is your human part. So human geography is about what exactly you do with what you get. Fine. So if you want an idea of, you know, how exactly things are to be done, let me just present with, uh, you know, a general understanding of how it works. So let's say that there is soil. Yeah. So from soil, the first thing which any human being will do is agriculture. So you might be thinking, so how is this relevant for geography? It very much is. Because based on the temperature, rainfall characteristics, which you've studied in section A, based on that, what will be the crop which is suitable for this climatic condition? Fine. So if my climatic condition is not suitable, what additional methods I should use for improving the production of my crops? You're getting the idea? Fine. So let's say there are uh, there is your earth. Okay. So from the earth, you are taking minerals, right? So in your uh, physical part of geography, maybe you'll have an understanding about economic geology. So if I take the earth, where exactly are my gold present? Fine, but this time when it comes to economic geography, how exactly should I, you know, locate my industry? Okay, for example, let me ask you this. Uh, is it easy to start a lithium plant in India? Lithium production, why? Because lithium is not in large amounts in India, except for the newly discovered resource in the Union territories of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh. This is just one example. You cannot start your industry without the basic mineral. Now, let's say that you don't have the basic mineral and you still want to start a lithium plant in Chennai. If you are going to start a lithium plant in Chennai, then where does the mineral come from? You're getting the idea? Exactly. We have to go back to possibly Australia or somewhere in your ABC triangle, some part in South America. So this is one more part of geography. So this understanding of how you use temperature precipitation from physical geography, which helps us in agriculture. At the same time, what factors govern your industrial location? Okay, so based on agriculture, how do we make sure that the population has food security? For example, let's take this uh, country called Syria. Okay, and we compare it with India. So both uh, Syria and India, if you take these two countries, can we say that we have problems of food security? Generally? Generally. Okay, so which, where is food security issues greatest right now? It is in Syria. Why is this in Syria actually? Yeah, because of conflict, right? Okay, because in Syria there is civil war. So, how does my political situation impact my agriculture? You're getting the idea how because of political issues, you can actually affect industrial location. No one wants to start a business there right now because it is not a stable country. So all this is studied under a topic called economic geography. You're getting the idea. So this is one dimension of geography, which people really may not know because they always have this wrong idea that geography is only about your physical you know, appearances. Is it clear? Now let's talk about the second, second feature. Okay, so now let's talk about this one. Right. So you tell me, which is the most populous city in Tamil Nadu? Chennai. Chennai. Any, any, what did you say, Shabir? Huh? It is Chennai, right? Maybe he thought it was India. Huh? So why Chennai? Give me reasons. If it is capital, population will be higher. That's not the case with Kerala. Kerala's most populous city is Kochi. But Trivandrum is the capital. Anything else? Okay, more job opportunities. That's a very good answer. Because of employment, you come here. Then why are you here in the first place? Education, very good. Then you're here for industries. No, right? Anything else? Healthcare, very good. 
So these are one of the few reasons. You can talk about all the industries, software, automobile, ports, etc. You're getting it. So people are migrating. Yeah. Fine. Okay. Let's take Rajasthan. Hmm. You know, we'll just go to uh, one. This is an addition slide. Yeah. Let's take Rajasthan. Fine. So what uh, Rajasthan is the largest state in India. Largest state. But Rajasthan's population is not the highest in India. Okay, largest population is somewhere else, which is the most populous state in India? It is Uttar Pradesh. So in spite of the fact that Rajasthan is the largest state in India, Rajasthan is not having the highest population. Why is that? Because more than half of your entire state is a desert. Which means climatic factors. Same thing. Your temperature, rainfall, your soil, whether you have mountains or whether you have plains. Let's say Uttar Pradesh. Okay. Check UP. This is roughly the structure. UP is the most populous uh, state in India because it has wonderful agricultural land. The plains of Ganga, the plains of Yamuna, and so many other rivers which keep feeding fertile alluvial soil. So your temperature, your rainfall, your geomorphology, which you studied in your physical geography, is going to determine human population character, population distribution. Where do humans get concentrated? Why do human beings move from one place to another? You're getting the idea. So when we study in your next segment, there is a topic called this population geography, where we study population characteristics. And when we talk about population characteristics, remember, there are, there are multiple dimensions to this. You just need to understand how broad this particular thing is. Let's talk about gender. Okay, and within gender, tell me about uh, sex ratio. What do you know about sex ratio or what is sex ratio? Basic question, number of females for a you know, reference population, usually we take it as 1,000 males. So sex ratio in India is less than 1,000, yes or no? It is less than 1,000. The number of females is less. But if you go to a country like Germany, sex ratio is reverse. There we have more number of females living than males. You're getting the idea. This is just one example where within population, we are talking about one particular dimension, gender which we again study under geography. Why is Germany's sex ratio different from India? You're getting the idea? Now, let me ask you this again. Okay. This is one more dimension. So in Japan, between young and old age population, which population is more? It's old age population. So when we study population, please understand population itself is a huge network. Within population is not just about factors, but within population, we're talking about women, we're talking about children, we're talking about old age population. So all that come under population. Is that clear? And the beauty is this chapter has an equally significant second part called a settlement. Called as settlements. That is your cities. Getting the idea. Why do cities start in the first place? What are the factors which make one city more prominent than any other city in the world? For example, tell me the capital city of uh, Nepal. Capital of Nepal is Thimpu. Capital of Nepal, Kathmandu. Okay, you know, Dr. Strange, he went there. Okay, now coming back, tell me the second most popular city in Nepal. Some of you are looking at me, you know, in this classroom that why am I even asking this question? Okay, why should I know even the second most populous city in Nepal? See, understand, when a country is exceptionally smaller, usually only one city will develop with higher uh, population characteristics than other part of the country. This is usual. This you can observe in Bhutan. This you can actually observe even in a country like Sri Lanka. These are simple examples. That is, even when it comes to, comes to population distribution, why only in certain areas the cities prosper? Okay, this we study under settlement geography. Why certain cities are more representative, more stronger compared to certain cities which are weaker. Okay. We also study about the structure of cities in terms of morphology. How does a city expand? In which direction does it usually expand? Is it along the transport networks? Uh, is it based on historical characteristics? Okay. Those factors. I'll just give you one more way of thinking. Let's take uh, Hyderabad. How many of you travel to Hyderabad? Okay. Two, three, five, four people. Okay. Hyderabad. How many have traveled to Delhi? Nice. Now you're in Chennai. Those people have traveled. What is one striking feature from Hyderabad, Delhi and Chennai in terms of city structure? Like you, you go there, you'll definitely feel some sort of difference. 
is congestion all all indian cities are congested which is again one path we have to study problems of urbanization thank you for that helping with the syllabus so what is one difference between hyderabad chennai on i put these two on one side this on one there is a clear structure or let me put it this way i think this will be easy for you to understand how is the cities on the left different from this one or how are they different from this okay coastal good very conscious about location then physically vanda you're not talking about physical geography at all i'm talking about cities here don't you see hyderabad delhi was shahjahanabad madras what is the basic difference very good thank you in terms of history this is constructed by british these were constructed by the nizams and the mughals you might be asking me sir why is this even relevant because we are actually opting for geography option not for history option see the point is based on who participated in city construction that actually determines the city construct city structure you go to a place like delhi or you go to a place like hyderabad you will find more forts as part of the city okay the architecture will be slightly different come to a place like chennai the prominence of mosque inside the city will be less go to hyderabad charminar is in such an important place in the city that will be where the market area is this is just one example on how history influences the geography of the place how the entire area expands so when we study about city evolution the structure of the city is also studied in that history is only a small dimension we look at economic factors we look at transport factors so all this we study under settlement geography so population and settlement that is your second part okay coming to the next one huh? we have something called as regional planning hmm? i need a volunteer to answer this huh? we'll again have the pretty much the same discussion in an optional class but still anyone just raise your hand it is a very basic question and i'll tell you the question also the question you'll have to answer is where are you from that's all ah where you're from you're from you're from pondicherry i don't know where is pondicherry tell me where is pondicherry i don't know no you just give me answers man where is pondicherry if someone comes and asks you pondicherry i don't know where is pondicherry southern part of india okay i don't know india where is india it's in asia okay what is asia i don't know what is asia where is asia assume i am from australia man what is equator now uh, hold on hold on let me try to try to answer why exactly we talked about this see thing is when some, when a stranger comes and asks you and uh, asks you to explain where exactly is his address you can explain that to him only based on what he knows you cannot simply randomly throw th throw these things why we talked about is based on the answers given no you can pretty much understand that our classification of what is considered as a place or a region varies india as such can be considered as a region so within that you use the word south india okay asia as such can be considered as a region okay thing is within pondicherry i can divide still pondicherry into multiple sectors for administration you getting it so what is considered as a region or what is considered as a particular place varies based on size you might ask me sir why is this relevant well just take uh, rajasthan itself since we spoke about the state remember this even though rajasthan is mostly controlled by the desert in the western part because of its climate please understand the eastern part of rajasthan is very much populous okay which has large amount of uh, more than 60 cm rainfall it's also a good agricultural state for production of most of your pulses and your oil seeds also now if you are planning for rajasthan let's say you want to improve the economic condition of rajasthan you want to contribute to its uh, you know gdp and all that you cannot plan have the same plan for region a and region b you getting it region a is totally different it's a plain region rainfall is almost uh, you know almost nil agriculture is simply not possible so here you have to go for mineral based industries you can extract oil from the okay from the surface of the earth maybe search whether there are many any minerals in the western part of rajasthan and based on what minerals are present you try to operate your industries come to the eastern side it is not that difficult if you rely on agro based industries because agriculture is actually possible here 
fine. And this is where most of your cities are present. So on the eastern side, you have city-based tourism. Example, Jaipur is one simple example. You're getting the idea. So when you plan for a region, only if you know where the region is, only if you know what the region has, it is possible for classifying the region and then planning for the region. Because regional planning is very important. And regional planning can be done only if you know what the place is. What are the parameters which I use to classify the place? What are the parameters based on which I should design the plan? So when I plan something, should I look only for economic development? Okay, for example, uh, let's say government is trying to construct an airport. Should I only focus on airport and transport connectivity? Or should I think about displacement of people? Okay, usually when you go for large scale dam construction, maybe tribes will get displaced from one place to another. You're getting the idea. So regional planning has a broad dimension where all the first seven, eight elements you have studied on a geography, all that is included. And we look how exactly we plan. This is an example for India. This is also done on the global scale. You're getting it? Now, two chapters are pending. Okay, and I'd like to address it as one because both of them are integrated. And remember that I always tell my students, there is no 10th chapter. Okay. The reason also I will tell you, there are only nine chapters in geography. Idea is, so far you've studied all the 10 chapters. You at least know what exactly these are. So when we talk about perspectives, perspectives about thinking. Okay. And to make you understand what do I mean by thinking or thought, let me ask you this question again. What is geography? Did Arun sir try to give you an answer? Yes, so what is geography in your understanding? Study of the Earth, okay then. Oceans. Mountains. Resources. No, no, no. Wildlife. Say something from industry now. We'll take industries, population and all that. See, thing is, there was one debate in geography. Who is a geographer? You go 200 years back, 250 years back. If you have a university and at university there is a geographer, what should the geographer study? Should he be studying about oceans? Should he be studying about mountains? Or should he study about people? Should he study about agriculture? Should he study about industries? So what is exactly geography? That is perspective. Okay. So under perspective, we'll be discussing about history of geographic thought. Why exactly there is something called as a geography syllabus? How did it come into picture? Those are the elements which we work under perspectives of geography. You're getting it. So here we'll be looking at thinkers and philosophers. Okay. Who actually said, no, this is how we look at geography. If philosopher A says something, okay. Philosopher B comes and says, no, this is not how we look at it. You have to look at it from a different perspective. They would appreciate it. So that is what we understand in perspectives where we explore different methods, different ideologies and philosophies of approaching the subject. You're getting the idea. And coming to the last one, why we say there is no 10th chapter is your syllabus structure is designed in such a way or geography syllabus structure is designed in such a way that from all the chapters for understanding and working on all the chapters, each of them has models. I'll give you one simple example. Let's take population. Okay. So if you take population, have you heard of Karl Marx? Yeah, he's a political thinker, a philosopher. Karl Marx has written about so many things. Okay. The man has also written about population. Fine. So under your models, there is one something called as where we see Karl Marx theory of population, which is part of your syllabus. So when you study this, Okay, you'll only be studying again about population geography. You're getting it? This is just one example. Similar to that, when it comes to economic geography, there are different methods of approaching agriculture, different methods of approaching industry. So similar to that, chapter 6, 7, 8, 9 will derive different segments of the syllabus from models. So once you have finished all the four chapters, then there is no 10th chapter. You're able to understand how this works because this is technically an amalgamation of all the models you've seen so far. Is it fine? So that is the dimension of human geography. And did sir speak about India? The last part, like paper two. Okay, please understand. Paper two is something which cannot be separated from paper one. So if you're studying about mountain systems across the world, naturally we'll work on study of mountain systems in India also. That's the way. So whatever you've studied 
in theory in indian geography we put it into practice and that is it uh, and no one uh, and and there's no variation in the approach if you're studying about cities globally you're talking about cities like new york and chicago in terms of their industrial development and population character at the indian level we will see how mumbai and delhi and chennai and bangalore and hyderabad have their own influence on city development and growth so that is the big difference we'll be having in terms of examples and indian characteristics but apart from that it is technically application of theory over india in fact if you take indian geography indian geography syllabus is very easy to cover okay if you look at the uh, classes or the number of hours which we spend also most of it will be for theory you getting the idea because indian geography is more of a case study and example specific to a single country where we delve it in detail okay apart from that for specifically to india you don't have any theory so if you're studying climate specific to india we have monsoon climates that's all there is nothing specific to india which is totally uh, you know uh, not present in paper 1 at all i think you're able to differentiate so that is technically a syllabus of paper 2 where everything is derived from theory so same thing for your class hours also so that is how we uh pretty much uh, address the subject and the method will be same by both faculty fine so now for the most important part actually this is uh putting up okay so this is technically our presentation please remember when it comes to optional rather than what we have spoken what is more important is what you wanted to ask us is it not so that is the one which we want to know what questions you had in mind i think at least 70 to 75% should have been solved if you are attending the demo that is the purpose of the demo the orientation to tell you like this is what is a subject if there is anything else we'd like to address the questions okay students online one one minute i'll just log in ஐடி கிடைக்குங்களா ஐ லாக் இன் ஜஸ்ட் கிவ் மீ அ மூமெண்ட் வில் டேக் டேக் क्वेश्चंस टुगेदर யூ கேன் சென்ட் इट थ्रू द चैट बॉक्स சோ इट्स मच इजी फॉर यू टू एड्रेस ओके बिफोर वी गो टू ऑनलाइन ऑफलाइन स्टूडेंट्स लेट मी नो लाइक व्हाट क्वेश्चंस डू यू हैव बिकॉज़ देयर देयर विल ऑलवेज बी समथिंग व्हिच वाज नॉट एड्रेस्ड डायरेक्टली सो वी जस्ट वांट टू टॉक अबाउट इट ஆப்ளேட் சிட்டு மா i am a chemistry student is it uh, wise to choose geography optional okay sam i am an electrical engineer by graduation okay and i am teaching geography now jokes apart see let, uh, understand one thing when it comes to choosing optional i am pretty sure arun sp- arun has spoke about it in detail the most basic criteria is, is this uh, this should align with the subject okay so and the purpose of the demo also is to make alignment because you might have an interest expecting the subject to be in one direction okay but it might be in a totally different direction you getting the idea so that is this is the most important criteria because uh, see i'll be frank here there are certain uh, selling points saying uh, this is easy or difficult there is no easy optional difficult optional uh, for my background will it be okay there is nothing like that it's more about your interest because if you're interested in the subject you're not going to face that level of easy or difficult there's nothing like that it varies from person to person so i think i answered your question background does not matter you can be a chemistry graduate physics graduate you might be from commerce law background when you study geography optional you have concentration in class you you uh, take up the notes which is pro- properly given then it should be fine is there a thing among that geography optional leads to lower mark and lower rank is it true nevada you can pretty much argue that for all optionals so uh, i don't think i can vouch for that because it's it's a perception that's all if you uh, look at uh, our own testimonials you can go to shankaray's academy youtube channel uh, you'll find a tamil nadu topper who got two years back he's in ips he's in tanjavur district his name is madan okay all india rank 195 uh, please uh, check for there is a small interview i think 10 or 12 minutes one of the faculty mr ganesh he's the interview program coordinator you'd have given and he would have spoke spoke about the optional so uh, the, so when it comes to toppers i have directly given an example uh, tamil nadu itself okay so and that's as recent as possible two years back so it, it's it's again something which is going on in the background where there is no evidence or proof to say that this optional leads to low marks or that okay next question 
first of all anything from here i have taken two from online so one from here what is the i wouldn't say it is difficult there is something called as a nature of the subject the nature of the subject is vast okay ne it's actually vast because you are talking about mountains at the same time you are talking about city structure you getting the idea like mountains are very different from cities and uh, as a student you should have the capacity to uh, or capacity or as i spoke about in the first one interest to have this inclination for both so that is the only thing so i would say it's a nature of the subject but some say this as a negative so since you asked me i'm uh, directly sharing this the subject is vast that is the nature of the subject because as geography geography is technically study of space huh? that's what we are studying so elaborately all different areas from larger to smaller and it is essentially vast okay that is the nature of the subject rather than doing it how many hours needed to be studying geography optional apart from gs papers uh, yashini i think that's a very difficult question to answer because you have said how many hours needed to study are you talking about one year one month one day uh, see whatever optional you choose huh? please understand whatever optional you choose it is not about geography optional the ratio is about your weightage no most toppers follow this strategy three papers essay ethics optional these three papers they try to maximize their scores okay because gs uh, there is always an upper ceiling because at the end of the day there is going to be 10 10 markers 10 15 markers you getting the idea so the amount of effort which you can put to change uh, let's just say extra one mark or extra two mark of a question that's it the, the 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 scope of expanding your marks doesn't really increase when it comes to your general studies so most stoppers follow the strategy of these papers essay paper ethics paper and optional they'll try to put in more effort to maximize their scores so when you ask how many hours i think that varies based on student which one you are giving more weightage i think that pretty much answers it because remember preparation is a long process where you have prelims and before that mains has to be combined and within mains we have general studies and optional right and if you look at total number of papers seven papers are there in which you have four gs papers one essay paper and two optional papers so if this is going to be your mark weightage or mark distribution the time which you allocate will pretty much be same 4 is to 1 is to 2 that is the total amount of time if you are spending let's just say 7 hours then 4 is to 1 is to 2 if it is going to be 7 days 7 weeks 7 months it's pretty much the same i think you got the idea so the amount of time or the number of hours you spend is again based on the weightage which is present in the examination some candidates take a higher risk of putting more number of hours in optional then reducing it proportionately in the gs but remember since you asked the question this will change based on what optional a candidate takes example uh, this is something which which anyone can observe a geography optional will have a natural tendency to write better answers in general studies paper 1 because geography is there in general studies paper 1 so obviously you get 100 marks directly from that so maybe there is one student from pub ed optional or political science optional he will naturally have a tendency to spend less amount of time in general studies paper 2 you getting the idea then agri optional less number of hours in general studies paper 3 because agri is directly there in your syllabus you getting it philosophy optional will spend less amount of time in general studies paper 4 so each optional has connections so it's not that one option so the number of hours question since you asked me so the number of hours which you spend in gs paper each gs paper will vary depending on what optional you are choosing that again is one more way of answering the question so thing is there is no exact number i can only give you a ratio only give you a ratio and this ratio is based on mark weightage okay gs to sa to optional okay thanks for that question anything else students online yeah No, six months syllabus will be covered. Please, another when when it comes to the amount of work you put in. Okay, this is about revising your class notes and then working on the standard textbook. Not all of them, because when we uh, mention textbooks in class, uh, it will be very clear. 
that certain books can be used only as reference there are for example for uh, biogeography there is a separate book on soil the book is more than 1000 pages but there is no point in reading those 1000 pages because mark orientation for your civil service exam from that book will hardly be 20 or 30 so getting it those are reference books so there are certain standard books which you have to read which is refer which is necessary for the exam perspective okay so the amount of work you put if it is properly aligning with your class notes and your standard books if you're able to get that concept conceptual clarity easier then there is no uh, level classification like ug or above ug or pg okay idea is to give an assessment of how deeper the subject will be okay for example a 6th standard student approaches the subject differently from a 12th standard from a ug and this word that the level will be in between pg and ug you know this is given in upsc syllabus i think you've seen it already right so it is same for all subjects getting it so within the limited amount of time whatever is relevant from exam perspective will be given through class notes and your standard textbooks so covering that will cover your entire syllabus irrespective of whatever level you're aiming for hmm? anything else thinks there was one more question no? role of current affairs see that is integrated as part of class let me explain uh, let's talk about a cyclone yeah fine so you're studying in which year 2024 okay so in 2024 november december there will be a cyclone in chennai indeed okay so when you're writing your answer in 2025 mains you will be quoting a cyclone from november december 2024 that is your current affairs you getting the idea fine so when we talk about current affairs preparation we will be focusing on disasters because certain areas doesn't have current affairs for example mountain tomorrow chennai is not going to see a 1000 meter mountain you're getting it but cyclones will be there so when it comes to current affairs there are certain areas which has to get updated and that updation is there in the natural course of class because when i teach in class i will definitely talk about a 2023 cyclone which is as recent as possible you're getting it and if you get a there will be a cyclone again in possibly four months say so i'm not saying negatively it is that is it is a nature of chennai it it happens every year if you are here for few years you'll understand so naturally this gets added as an example okay in certain areas current affairs is simply impossible okay we cannot say yesterday a mountain rose no you getting the idea i think got the difference hmm. students online i think members are there but i don't see any questions huh? let me know yeah geology is very different from geography take it from me because i have written geology mains for my forestry exam okay i appear 2023 mains i have written and uh, when did the second session start dear god how many minutes has it been i think 40 minutes at least yeah at least 40 minutes 30 plus 35 to 40 you took a long break when i asked you to answer questions i said questions on geography optional okay not random ones like these now to take that question and some might be having this doubt because one more student from gs asked me please understand geology is this if this is the surface of the earth just from the surface everything else inside is your entire syllabus that is all the 20 chapters will be about this of course 10 chapters uh, here six chapters six here you'll have stratigraphy uh, paleontology uh, if you want an overview mm -hmm. let me just explain the basic difference with geography then i'll come so geology entire syllabus will be based on what is only inside the earth geography is this surface this also interior of the earth this 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 and uh, this holds that is weapons wars and all that you get the difference with geography and geology right geography is everything pretty much everything geology is only one part so if you are interested in this part of the earth then geology is a 
you, you get i think you pretty much got the difference okay geography is much wider hmm? ah. how much percentage of geography will be similar to geology is that the question or no it's very less hardly 10% if you want me to represent it as a venn diagram if you, as a venn diagram then this is it geology is here and uh, geography is here maybe 10% even 10% i think will be a higher amount only only 10% uh, maximum okay it's very different very very different under geology you'll be studying about stratigraphy stratigraphy as in uh, let's take uh, deccan plateau so within deccan plateau what were the layers 60 million years ago which was formed 70 million years ago what is there 80 million years ago what exactly is there you will be studying about uh, paleontology what fossils are present okay based on what type of fossils uh, you know it, it is possible to decipher the age of the rock rocks will be studied in detail and depth okay within rocks is not just about rock types but we, we know within that you have a lot of classification okay so geology that's why you know like everything below the earth so it's mean much much more detail okay merlina uh, you have an interest okay based on going through ncrts will i be able to understand the concepts from classes as a beginner see if you still have any doubts okay because we have uh, spoke spoken about different elements of the syllabus here syllabus part is done okay that's that's the purpose of the demo and uh, this is this, this i think was holistically explained you do not have any problem with that right so what you will be studying has already been explained if you still have you know uh, let's just say still not had the clarity to go ahead one more area where you can look for just go to the upsc website look for question papers of the last two years that will give you an idea any subject just for the last two years okay because that pretty much will tell you uh, where they ask questions from and uh, that will tell you whether you are interested in studying about it you i think you pretty much got the idea okay because it will tell you where rather than one path alone hold on soundarya i missed your question soundarya i cannot speak for two subjects comparison is not possible it varies from uh, a student to student okay so uh, it is up to the student to compare fine it won't be uh, right from my side also no okay so sociology and geography there is i cannot say which one is easy that's again easy is a very it's a very it's a vague term no it varies based on person from person is geology only for forest service no karthik geology as a syllabus is present for uh, your uh, civil service also you can go through the syllabus in upsc website will this orientation class recording be available on youtube so you are concerned because you missed 35 to 40 minutes yes it will be uploaded i believe so relax huh? or it will be shared through telegram channels if you are a gspcm student most likely because not all of them are here okay so i think uh, soundarya question is answered um, it's not possible to say which subject is easy it it, it varies based on student huh? chabir your doubts are clear geology versus geography your uh, doubt regarding level level of preparation is again subjective we will make sure that as a faculty we provide uh, enough content which will help you to address the answer and get marks so level doesn't matter then yeah, teachers do that how to evaluate ourselves not paper how to evaluate it is after writing the test you're talking about right or okay fine see please understand for that we have this so if the course starts in july 6 months roughly during the course of class see remember first one month will be slow because you'll be setting into the subject okay and first one month we have to construct a lot of things after the first month you start having regular test okay where you'll have sectionals and after sectionals are over at the end you'll have a full test so tests are a part of class which happens at regular frequency is that clear that is a part of your course pretty much true for all subjects uh this question i think there there is a thing among people that geography optional leads to lower marks and lower marks is it true okay again uh niveda i have already answered about the topper uh, mr madan uh, let me let me put it this way next time a person comes and tells you tells you that it doesn't work that uh, it doesn't give you marks 
ask for his UPSC mark sheet because most likely 99% of the time the person who told you will not have cleared prelims. Most likely because the I, I met a student recently. Uh, he was studying here I think four years back. He said his changed is optional. I thought that okay he has changed his optional after scoring low in his first mains. He has not even cleared prelims so far. Okay, he changed his optional. He said, sir, because I feel like I don't know where the money comes from to again pay fees to spend six months. Okay, now the point I'm trying to communicate is when someone tells you this, when someone gives you this perception, please ask the second question, where is your mark sheet? Uh, and please check whether he has scored low only in the optional paper or all papers. That also will help you to get an assessment. Okay, so who's telling you that? And please ask that one single question. Okay, I think that will pretty much help you. It will take much time in answer writing as we get to give creative answers like drawings. See, please understand, we are not, we are drawing maps. Please remember, there are different ways of drawing. We are drawing maps. We are drawing hub and spoke models. Technically, uh, schematics. For example, if you're studying about the physical part of geography, of course, like when we talk about maps, you have to draw India and uh, then uh, simply show. So where exactly in India you have maybe uh, the most important uh, metropolitan cities. That's it. Just to show like these are the major cities of India. So drawing India map, drawing world map, I will teach you. That is my job. Okay. So once you get the basic foundation, whatever topic comes, I can use this for cities. I can use it for uh, indicating monsoon systems. I can use it for showing where my mountain systems are. So when it comes to drawing maps, world map and India map will be the basic foundation. Okay. Then second, drawing outline of states is not a challenge at all. Like you, you take Tamil Nadu, it hardly takes, that's it. Okay. No one is going to expect a, a larger, a perfect depictions of any state in India. It is simply not possible. Thing is, any drawing which you're going to do, it should be done within 7 to 10 seconds only because you have a larger answer to write. So when we talk about drawings, this is not what you used to do in your record notebooks in your uh, school days or college days or your uh, lab-based, uh, you know, um, lab-based drawings or diagrams. These are much simpler to draw and that is only for indicating things. This will save 50 to 100 words actually because you show this, your, your job is pretty much done. The person sees the diagram he uh, understands what is uh, what you're trying to convey. That is how diagrams work. And second is schematics. See, schematics is employed actually pretty much in different formats. You can go for a, this is a natural hub and scope model where you talk about uh, uh, there is one entity A and what factors are affecting factors. Factors B, C, D, E. This is one simple way. Or you can do a flow chart. Okay. So these type of representations, this is not exclusive to geography. This I can use even in an ethics paper. You're getting it. So even an ethics paper, case studies, uh, people go for flowcharts. I'm pretty sure you would have got introduced by that also. Okay. So there is no, uh, there is nothing like, since I'm going to draw diagrams, it will take a lot of time. No, you will be taught and you will learn to draw it in a much shorter period of time. You have to. You have to. There is no question of I took 20 seconds. No, you have to draw it, you draw it faster. It's something which you learn through the class. Okay. So I think Niveda I answered your question. If someone has told you about lower marks, please ask the person's mark sheet. Even I am curious. Okay, there is one guy going around in Ananagar. I want to know who exactly the person is and why did it happen in the first place. Because most people have to, you know, say things without any concrete proof. Thing is, there is no accountability for that factor. No? So we just want to clarify that. Then mostly run offline. Any doubts last? Mostly fine. So, students online, let me know if anything is there. Is there rating? Okay, man. Okay. Prashant, I, I'll answer that question, but that's not related to this one, no? Ah. Ah, ah. See, that is what, see, you're, when, you, when you draw maps, your objective is to reduce time. And you can draw maps for any reason. It's not necessary that you have to use places. You can represent uh, rainfall parameters. You can say, uh, these are the, you, you just draw India map. 
and say, you know, so these are the high rainfall areas. So they get more than, you know, just say greater than 200 centimeters rainfall. That's it. This is just to show where the areas have high rainfall map. So when you use maps, it is not necessary location of places. Just representation. You can say high temperature. These areas are continental climate. Just to show that this is where Tropic of Cancer is. So the way you can use maps is very different. This is just India's example. Same outline we'll have for the world based on what the topic, for example, if a sir is teaching climate, so he'll draw different type of maps. If I'm teaching cities, I'll be teaching different type of maps. It's about the outline is going to be same. Okay, what you mark on it will be different. Is it clear? And you do know as part of your exam, uh, uh, if you're choosing this optional, the 20 marks, that, did sir talk about that? Yeah, 20 marks will be India map, map marking. That is different, where you just have to mark the place and say so and so. Okay, that is again part of class. Have you managed geology and forestry? How, how did you manage geology and forestry? I studied, man. I had to study. It was life and death, my last attempt. I studied. I don't, I can't give a better answer. Huh? Will it take, I think, yeah. Why are you asking obvious questions? How did I manage? I studied. I had to work. I had to spend so many countless hours. Huh? You have to manage, man. Six weeks time was there. Then, See, again, I cannot answer. See, thing is, every optional faculty uh, has to speak. So I cannot generally answer which optional subject has less content and not vast. I can say geography is vast because I'm geography faculty. I haven't studied other optionals, okay, in terms of history or political science or forbad in detail. So it's not right from my side. That's why when it comes to comparative questions, other subjects, it's I, I'm trying to sidestep because it won't be right. You talk about this subject, I will answer. Okay. Anything else? Say, so I don't want to hold you for too long. I know that uh, you also have some work. So, share your experience in optional uh, during preparation periods. I don't know how is it going to help you. Could you be more specific to the question which you want to ask? Because I can speak without any relevance, actually. So, I can simply talk about my experience, which won't help you. That is why, huh? I think you got my answer, no? Like, because we are trying to address uh, how uh, optional will be useful or uh, or trying to help you to choose an optional. Okay, so that won't... Of course, if you, I can answer this question, but what did you exactly want? Please let me know faster. Others are also waiting. Anything else? Because you're giving me 10, 15 markers. Share your experience and optional during preparation period. How is it relevant to you choosing the optional? Huh? Please be specific. Huh? Drawings was a good question. Diagrams was a good question. Okay. Uh, with reference to a segment, it is... No, I still can't take that, but no, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't really help you. Okay, ask uh, ask any other questions, students online, else we'll, I think I can call or answer and uh, close. If there are any more queries, aren't any more queries. Nivedha, that's, uh, the strategy, strategy to generate points and mains is something which you learn during the course. Okay, and let me tell you something, that is something which you can build only when you study the entire paper. Okay, so when you pretty much study, uh, have, have addressed all the dimensions, starting from physical to climate, uh, for example, they're asking you one question uh, regarding a problem in a particular city, you look at all the dimensions, you look at whether it is a mountain or a plain, that is, is a, you know, uh, chapter number one, you look at rainfall, temperature, chapter number two, you look at whether it is present closer to the ocean, chapter three, number four and five, whether it's present in a forest area. So you look at all the dimensions. That's a simpler way of looking at one particular issue. Exactly for generation of content. 
is there topics related to agriculture challenges interrelated with geography yes especially indian agriculture is chapter number 3 so i'll repeat again agriculture comes in two ways that is paper 1 chapter 7 under economic geography we will be studying under world agriculture this is for world and when it comes to paper 2 chapter 3 is indian agriculture and under indian agriculture we look at uh, crop systems irrigation systems institutional issues infrastructural issues which affect indian agriculture so those dimensions will be addressed okay so this is specifically there surya kumar i think this answers your questions chapter 7 and paper 1 world chapter 3 uh, in paper 2 this is for india okay shall we close then is there anything else okay regarding material see as part of your course there will be a list of books which we have to buy did sir speak about this no okay see as part of your course uh, there will be a set of standard books which we will ask you to buy from the market okay but as part of course material you will be given three books okay roughly 70 to 100 pages each and this is for covering areas for which standard books are not there i'll give you one example so there is a book on regional planning which is part of your course material now why are we providing this because in the market we don't have a specific textbook for regional planning it is not available so what you've done is we've compiled a material from our institution which will help you along with your class notes so with class notes this is provided i'll give you one more example let's take perspectives i've talked about uh, geographic thought so again for perspectives there is a book available in the market but it might be too vast for certain students so we have actually crystallized it only for the exam only for the exam so that is again part of course material there is one more book for physical geography also okay which deals with certain areas not covered in your standard textbook so along with class notes this is part of your material okay so i think nivedha that answers your question so this is if you uh, wanted to know about material given as part of the course huh? anything else but of course this alone won't be sufficient i think you understand you have to get books separately fine shall i close then if see if there are no doubts at least sell no doubts so it will be uh, is it okay to disclose a standard book name see if you have taken geography okay but i don't have any problem in disclosing uh you want the entire list now book list that will that will be a proper geography optional class which is on next saturday i will introduce in detail okay that will keep diverging from the scope of the discussion today okay so if there are no more doubts please send no more doubts at least two or three of you so that i can uh, close the discussion okay kabilesh has said no anyone else in one more or two more responses i'll close the session it's up to you fine then okay fine thank you the students online uh, thank you for listening thanks for spending your time to uh, see whether you take the option or not it is completely up to you but at least you, you gave your time i hope it was worthwhile you understood what exactly is the subject and whether the subject will align with your personal interest and your and i just have one thing to communicate please understand please understand take any number of hours to choose no problem it is it, it, totally fine you choose any option take any number of hours to think but please remember after you choose after you choose don't change optional you're wasting your time and your life i've known students see if you have written there are certain students for example they have they would have written two mains and consistently over two three mains if they are not scoring if they are getting very very good marks in general studies and only because of optional if they are they are having any problems i have seen students change their optional that is after writing two three mains they go on to interview only because of optional their marks are very less these are exceptional cases exceptional those people changing optional is totally fine i know my own friend okay they have done that they have cleared the exam they got it into ias but there are people who simply change optional because they can change optional they study one option for 3 months 
and they after 3 months which is like mid mid preparation they'll change option which is totally wrong because you are wasting your time okay so my i have only one recommendation think as many number of hours as possible please do not change after you choose okay because you are wasting time see money of course you can earn in the future but time is much more important huh? okay vivo we have not mentioned your name i'll again mention please go to youtube and uh, search for mr madan okay i think roughly 12 minutes only not lengthy mr ganesh sir would have interviewed it is there in the youtube channel you look for yourself okay this because this result was after after shankar sir that is why i'm insisting he studied under us in 2019 he was my batch student second year second batch uh, my first batch was in 2018 december hmm? so uh, you know madan was in july 2019 batch okay he was also part of gs pcm weekend batch foundation course okay so studied here okay that is why i asked you uh, please look for it actually i should be writing doctor hmm? he is uh, an mbbs graduate and after that he got into police service so whoever asked this question please look for that it is there i think 2 years ago or i think 18 months earlier okay there is there was one interview which was shot okay so that's it for today i think i pretty much communicated so remember this don't change after you choose take n number of hours before you choose okay you can look, look at all the demos also in case if you have confusion fine so thank you that's the last talk and vivo thanks for asking so that i could insist also okay so that's it we are closing the session uh, online so offline students if still anything is there you can ask me so i'll call for closure now because i have not received any more doubts thank you thanks you have anything else okay then then we are done that's all thank you thanks for your time